Hi. Hi everyone, it's Heidi here at Riverside Beads. And we are live. I'm just trying to get, oops, here we go. So I've got it up on my, oops, on my phone so I can see, that's the one. Okay, so I can see what comments you have. I can see whether the picture's clear, etc. Okay, so I've not seen everyone for a while. Uh, last one was two weeks ago, because um, I do every two weeks and Donna does the opposing weeks. So it's nice to see you all again. And today we're gonna do some bead embroidery. Hi, Gwenda, Lourdes, Dawn, Helen. Um, I'm not gonna do a shout out to everybody because I'm sure you all want to see. Hi, Jane and Dawn. <laughs> um, it's nice to see you all and I really love doing these. So today is bead embroidery and we're going to do our beautiful, so you can see him there, the little elephant and her baby. Okay, I haven't named him, but they're all done with beads. Okay, and this is a kit, this is one of our kits that we've produced um, and is available at Riverside Beads. So you can either give them a ring if you're too far away, they're online, um, the kit's online as well, it's $14.99, or you can pop in store and buy it as well. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to turn the camera down so you can see better. Oops, I don't see. Okay. Let's move this to the middle and hope that you can see it nice and clear. Okay, so in your kit, you get little grip bags with, let's see if you can see the beads. Can you see the beads there? Okay. So you get little beads in your kit, so you get enough to do the whole elephant. You get a piece of bead foundation. It's not felt, it's bead foundation, and it's... It's especially for beads, so when you bead onto it, it doesn't fray, um, the fibres don't come out, etc. Um, and obviously you need to cut it out. Okay, so I've cut mine out there. Now, you will see a slight difference on my cutting out from my, my big one. Um, on the big one, he's got a heart, or she's got a heart in her trunk. Now, that's up to you. You can either leave it in or take it out. Now, I prefer it without... The heart so you can see where I've cut it and not left the heart in but you can leave it in if you wish to okay what else you get in your kit is you get a brooch back and some felt now yours will all be in white mine's blue because that's what I had you will need to make sure you don't miss his tail off as well so you will need to cut around him onto the felt um, but you need to do that at the end so that's fine and you have a needle and you will have some thread I think you have a KO thread you have another smaller piece of felt and this is for you to add your brooch back securely onto your back of your piece when you're finished okay so that's that's the brooch back and that's how I put the little piece in and then I glue that to the back of my felt and you can actually add a few stitches if you want to make it more secure, but you don't need to. Um, so the only thing that you haven't got in your kit is a pair of scissors and some PVA glue. Okay. So, tip some of your beads out on your bead mat so that you can see them. And... Oh, hello, Steve Smith. Uh, yeah, it's Heidi. <laughs> Why did you think it was going to be your missus today? Oh, bless. Okay, so, oh gosh, we've got lots of people watching. I'm just going to move my beads a bit so that you can hopefully see them. Okay, so, I'm putting them in the wrong colour piles, but hey-ho. Okay, so, to start, I'm going to take a couple of metres of my thread. I'm just going to snip that off and add my needle when you're adding your thread if you it, I'm not going to show you because I'm going to put it in my mouth but if you um, place it between your teeth and squish the end 
alternatively if you've got nails you can put it between your nail and your finger and just flatten it um the the, the threads are usually a round shape so they don't go through holes really easy or the holes on needles really easy so just squish it with your teeth or your finger and hopefully it's going to go through straight the first time yes usually pretty lucky with this okay so once you've cut around your piece and decided whether you want your heart in or whether you want it plain we're now going to start picking up our beads to cover this now i usually start round the edges or start on this one or one or other side you can start on either side it doesn't really matter so the first one thing i'm going to do is put some beads along my trunk okay and don't worry about the back of your piece no one's going to see it so don't worry if you've got lots of knots and things like that so i'm going to start where i have a line on my piece right near the edge not too close to the edge because you're going to put a line of silver beads right around the very edge okay so actually we could start with the silver beads and put them right on the edge now there's a mix of sizes in your beads you've got size eights and then you've got size elevens and there's also some crystals as well um you can see very clearly from our photo photography which beads to use morning dawn um, which beads to use so it's very good to see which ones you're using you can mix them about yourself if you want um, but bear in mind that if you are using a bead that there's not as many of you don't want to run out unless you can get down the shop and get some more so we're going to add sort of between depends how confident you are but I'm going to add two four six eight I've got nine beads there and just where the stitching would end, I'm going to put down my needle through the, the bead foundation. Okay, so you can see that they're right on the edge there. And they will move over to be right on the very edge. So I'm going to go back up to the top of my, my beads. So it pulls it nice and tight. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go... Oops down the other side of my piece so I'm actually catching between the first two beads so this is called couching um, and this is so that it will heat, hold those beads completely in place and then I'm going to do the next one so I'm going to go a couple of holes down a couple of beads down sorry and pass my needle back up again so these are holding the beads right on the very edge of the piece and don't worry if you can see any stitches on this left hand side because obviously your next row of beads will go in between those so let's move down again let's go down another hole so another gap in the beads and you can just maneuver the threads as much as you want to catch those beads okay so you can go down I mean you can go down every single one if you wish it's absolutely not necessary though so every other bead or oh, it depends if there's a curve um, on the material so if it's got to go around a curve you may want to do every other bead or there may be a specific bead that um, that needs to be caught and held in place so just play it by ear and you can go every other bead you can go every bead and then once you get down to the bottom of it, to make it look as though you've used continuous amounts of beads, we're going to take the needle back through to the back. Okay. And obviously these stitches here that you can see will be covered by the repeat stitching on the middle. So now I'm going to come up from where I originally started at the top of that row of beads and this is to help make the continuation of the beads much easier so I'm going to pass through that top bead and I think Donna is kindly putting a link to the project on Facebook and so you will be able to get this online by following that link so I'm picking up some more silver beads to make this line continuous okay and you can see 
it's going around the corner. Oops, that's me with my finger. The corner of her trunk. So again, where the beads are going to stop, put your needle down so that it at least holds those beads in place there for you. Then go back to where you've just started, added that new row. Take your needle and start passing between those beads at the edge again. Oops, Daisy. So all I do is I do it on the edge so that I can use the edge as an anchor. So when I go up and over in between the beads, oops, the edge is my anchor. And then I just go back up through the, there we go. Bring it up from the back again. And anchor that bead on the end. You can use your needle to manoeuvre your little piece of thread if you're all finger and thumbs like I am. And again, to the last bead. Let's just secure that in place. So obviously what I would do now is continue this right up to the top. So right up to the tip of her trunk. And then I would move down and around and go back up in this direction up. Let me use my scissors so you can see. So round this way and up to the top of her head and then I would continue to go round the outside of her body. So once you've done that, which is real easy to do, then you can start adding the beads in the grey colour, which is the main bulk of her body. Okay, so I'm going to show you. Oops, a daisy. to start adding, oh I should at least thread that through there so nobody can see it, that's fine. That's it. So then I'm going to start adding these grey beads for her trunk. And just make sure when you pull your stitches tight that they don't make a hook all wiggly because you don't want that. But any mess, you can see I've made a terrible mess on the back there, any mess on the back, any Tiny weeny little threads, there is a little weeny thread there from part of my knot. Any weeny little threads you can actually, oops, let's snip that off. How can it be so difficult to snip off a tiny weeny thread just because it's upside down? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start picking up some grey and the grey again is the same size as the silver ones, so this is a size 8 bead and actually once you start doing the interior beads obviously they sit quite nicely because they're up against they're up against these silver beads so it's it gives you a bit more sense of direction with them okay so just push them tight against themselves so you know where the end's going to be and pop your needle down to secure that row okay now you, there's two ways of doing this you can either as you couch these beads, I'm going to do the first one. So you can bring your thread just down. Oh, Wendy. Okay, you'll be able to see it later because we do save it. So you can come back to it and rewatch it. And also, if you get the kit and you need to rewatch it, you can, you can watch it again to help you do your kit. Okay, so the first one I did there, whoops a daisy. just take a bit more of my thread out so the first one I did I've brought the bead down I've brought the, the thread down to the right side of the bead next to the silver bead so I've gone down that middle bit but you can if you want to make them you know absolutely tight with the um, silver beads you can pass the thread up on that left hand side and you can pass it right over the silver bead as well so in fact it's encasing both so you don't get any gaps or anything down down the beads so if I continue in that vein it means that you've got an anchor um, that's going to help you Oops. 
and I've just made a, a knot. Let's just reattach my needle. So this is a really fun kit to do and uh, you get loads of comments if you walk around with these these brooches on. We've done some in the past, we've done some floral ones and we have got another one coming up soon hopefully um, that is a, a, a cute little bumblebee so I'm really hopeful that one's going to come around shortly um, but they do seem to be really popular um, I think just the way times are at the moment it's nice we can't see people's expressions on their faces but you can kind of the brooches just make you smile you know, so you kind of know that the person looking at you and looking at your brooch is smiling, whether they've got a mask on or not, which is kind of nice, I think. And, you know, it's nice to make other people smile. They may, they may be having a really bad day, um, but you may give them a little smile with one of your brooches on, you know. So, okay, you can see I'm just right down at the last bead. And they do tend to s slide over slightly. So all you need to do is put your needle through your bead and just lift it back up again. Okay, and let's just do this last one. I reckon Winky's getting stuck. I'm sorry if my fingers are a bit too close, but you do need to be holding it. So again, we're gonna do what we did previously with the silver beads. So we're gonna continue them on. So I'm gonna pass my needle down to the back and come straight back up at the top. Okay, are my speakers on low? Let me just check. Okay, I've turned mine up if, if that's worked any. Please let me know. Okay, so I'm now going to pass down all those beads we just added. I do have sort of like a croaky voice, I'm afraid, so it, it doesn't really get that much higher. <laughs> Okay, so I've now passed down all those beads, so now we can add on our next lot. Okay, so yeah, if anybody else is having any issues, please do let us know. I have turned my volume up, um, I don't have a particularly loud voice at the moment. So yeah, just let me know and I'll see if I can twiddle something, but I'm not brilliant at that sort of thing, so. <laughs> okay, so you can see I've added some more. I'm gonna go back to where I added the last lot. All my volumes are up. So I must still be, am I still having an issue? Okay. Um, okay, so I've showed you how to do that bit. That's pretty straightforward. So there are different parts on this. So there are some areas here where it's like tassels um, and like a sort of a, a wavy um, pattern on. They've got those um, saddle type things that I know they're not for sitting on, but where, what they used to wear in the old days in the circuses, they've got like these saddle things with little tassels on and there are a few bits that we have to go on these so with the tassels if I bring in our sample so with this one um, that's the little wavy part on the saddle and these little ones down here are the tassels so as I say I would not um, I would do the whole of the, the body and stuff before I did the tassels. Um, and I would definitely, I would add the eye. Oh, I'm sorry, Helen. Maybe when you rewatch it, it might be better. Um, yeah, so, sorry guys. Um, the eye I would add as part of adding my grey beads. So I can show you how I would add the eye. I am using black thread here and I would de normally I would use a thread that, um, that obviously blends in better, but I'm using black so that you can see hopefully what I'm doing. Um, the, 
The eye is a black bead, so it's one of the eight black beads and it's one of the little white pearly beads on top. So I've picked up both beads and hopefully you can see that on the camera. Okay, and then when we go back down, we don't pass back through the white bead, otherwise it would fall off. We're just going back down through the little black bead and this will give us a white bead on top so it looks more eye-like. Oops, I got caught around my edge. There we go, you can see the little black bead on top. Okay, so that's how we add the eye and the same for baby's eye as well. Okay, and then the little tassels. So these again are done in the same technique. Okay, and so the first ones I've got here are red ones and they have a size eight red and then we've got a size red, size 11, sorry, red to coordinate with them. Okay, so they look as like though they're one bead, but they look more three dimensional. So you can see these on my mat just there. Okay, so I pick up a larger one first. So that's the eight and then an eight, uh, an 11, sorry. Okay, and we put that one on there and hopefully you can see, and I'm just going to pass down the eight bead rather than the top one. So the top one is the 11 and the bottom one is the eight. Pull it through and that makes it 3D. Okay, you see that? Oh dear, please don't give up Wendy. Is it Wendy? No, Helen, please don't give up. So, we do the same thing again. So we pick up the eight on the bottom and the 11 on the top. And we go back down through the eight. Okay, so you can see they sit above. It gives it a bit more dimension. Okay, so let's uh, show you a bit more. So when you've completed, I'm just going to undo this, this brooch we had up for the shop. Okay, so this is my finished one that I've got here. And you can see, it looks absolutely stunning, doesn't it? So what I had to do when I got all my beads done, everything uh, completed, I had to lay my elephant onto my, oh, my fat one it was. There we go. I had to lay it onto the felt, okay? We put it on felt because it's, we're not stitching into it, so we're not going to get the fraying and stuff like that. Um, and the felt is obviously slightly thinner. The, the bead foundation is a little bit stiffer. Um, so you, you want the stiffness, obviously, to, to hold things in place and not fray when you're sewing. So when you get to this point and you've finished all your beading, um, take your elephant. Now, you need PVA glue, which you would put all over the back of it. Put it onto your felt and then... Leave it to dry so it's completely dry and put something really heavy on it to, to make sure it's adhered nicely to your piece. Okay, and then you cut around very carefully, make sure you don't cut into any threads. It's better to leave a tiny weeny little bit sticking out if you're going to cut into your beads instead because you'll, if you cut in, snip into a row of beads, you might end up losing a full row. You can put them back in, you can stitch them back in, or you can glue them back in, but you, you don't really want to have to start doing that, obviously. Um, and then once that's been cut out and placed on, you can sit your brooch bar on the back. Oh, actually, I've got one here. I've got my brooch back there, and you thread the little tiny re rectangle shape through, and then I glue it down onto the elephant in the position. I kind of try it on myself first and then see what position I want it in. Um, and then just some PVA glue over under these two sides of it. 
um, and if you want to after it's dried you can stitch a little bit on the edges just to keep it secure um, and then voila you have your elephant so she's really really gorgeous and I'm really pleased with her and I think we probably should have a name for her as well but uh, I'll leave it to you guys to decide okay How's everybody doing? So has anybody got any questions they need to ask about the, the, the elephant? Um, did everybody get to see it nicely and uh, clearly? No? No questions? Okay, so next week it will be Donna on Facebook Live next Wednesday. Um, not quite sure what she's doing um, for Facebook next week. Um, I definitely, in two weeks time, will be, oh, thank you. Thank you, Helen. That's nice. She said it was great. Fantastic. Thank you, Donna. Okay, so next week, Donna's on. Um, and then the week after that, it's me again. And I'm hoping to get on the um, the beaded wreath that I did many years ago for a, for a, a jewellery magazine. Um, and we always put it out in the shop in the run up to Christmas. Um, I've got one that's sort of part way through, which I'm going to I'm going to show you both. But I'm going to bring um, obviously the one that I'm working on still. I'll bring that on and show you how to do it. Um, and Donna's hopefully going to get together with me and we're going to put together some beads in like a kit form. So, uh, you know, a bundle of beads that you can buy alongside a polystyrene wreath, a uh, circle thing. Um, and then you can buy that instead of having to make purchases separately because it can get, you know, a little bit more expensive because of the amount of beads you use. But you can use a lot of acrylic and make it look absolutely stunning. Okay, so thank you very much, guys. Thank you for watching. And I'm Heidi um, and Riverside Beads. Get online. Have a look at our, our collections online and our, um, our kits because they are beautiful. And if you can't get online to get a kit, then you can ring the shop. And, oh, Donna's just replied to me. So, yes, Donna's doing wire work next week. So, fantastic. So any of you wire workers out there and the other guys as well, because it's a nice element to add to jewellery making, that'll be fantastic. I'm sure we'll be watching. Um, so, yes, thank you very, very much. And let me turn the camera back up just a second so you can see me. OK, so I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And I shall see you in two weeks time. Thanks very much. Bye.